folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. To play the bass in an improvisational setting, you have to keep time and lock the groove. You have to play in odd meters and time signatures, like you're drinking out of the third cup, puncturing the atmosphere with a language all its own. My guest today is one of the most gifted double bass players in the world. He has resided in Japan for the last three decades because he can play real music for appreciative, at times rabid fans. He grew up in Oakland, which was a hotbed of southern transplants who came to the shipyards to work during World War II. The kids played music in the streets, in the garage, on the corner, wherever they could express themselves. The incandescent vocals of Sam Cooke and Ray Charles and Little Richard filled the air, while improvisational masters like Paul Chambers and Cal Jader, Dewey Redman, Merle Saunders, Vince Guaraldi, and Jules Broussard played the On Broadway, the Both And, and Jimbo's Bob City. My guest's rhythm mate was Mike Clark, and before and after they played gigs, they were marinating in a mix of Miles, Train, Tony Williams, and Elvin Jones, learning how to play in and out of time, playing rhythm but not backbeat, marrying boogaloo with jazz before funk was ever known as a genre of music. My guest became a hired gun with rhythm and blues and soul outfits before co-joining with the aforementioned Clark along with Herbie Hancock, Benny Maupin, and Bill Summers in a band that was known for headhunting. Hang up your hang-ups because you don't have time to think. This group is a unit of constant creation on the heels of M. Wadishi, taking abstract styling and fusing them with dance-step, toe-tapping, Gene Krupa war cry swing. The Hunters of Heads carried on at Arista Records, trying to survive in a more Darwinistic industry, although because of my guest's dexterity on his instrument, he was an in-demand studio musician playing on seminal Latin funk albums with Coke Escovito, and being a black octopus, octopus or raging at small bars in Japan with char, boiling over and over and over into the eternal blossom of love. Paul Jackson, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. 18-year-old Japanese drummer. And he's my Tony Williams. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. And, yeah, oh yeah. And with, along, along with a very accomplished uh, Japanese um, piano player, uh, Tomomo Hani, uh, the drummer's name is Riku Tiara. These people I would like to bring to, uh, well, one of the hunts, like in Oakland, really, but it's only one. It's to bring the band to Yoshi's and also play with my sister, Denise Perrier, who was, I mean, I mean, an unbelievable, you know, I mean, jazz artist in, in, in her own right and, and it's made history in the Bay Area and around the world. And also, my cousin, which a lot of people don't know, you know, is, is Roger Glenn. Uh, I, I did an interview. Yeah, I, 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 yeah Rod, unbelievable. The trumpet player, vibe player, you know, four, no, four, 747 airline pilot. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I interviewed you know, Roger. I, I interviewed Roger on the radio maybe three years ago. I didn't realize you guys were. I knew he grew up in Inglewood Cliffs. I didn't know you guys were related, though. Oh, no. This, man, we're, 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 we're related. I, have, I, have, I mean, <laughs> my father is one of 18. Children, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nine boys and nine girls. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. I haven't even found my residence. That's why, like, I, you know, if, on my Facebook page, I automatically set to anybody that's named Jackson if I have any room because I don't know if they're related or not. <laughs> 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 they're all people who check the name. I don't care if they're white or black. Oh, you know, man. Like, That's good, man. Uh, can you tell me um, uh, tell me about the, the the music you guys are playing right now that you're cooking on? <laughs> well, the, the music that, that now I'm doing is a, is, is a refinement. Is, 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 a, is a refinement of what actually uh, I've been doing here in Japan in 35 years. See, the problem is, is that so um, in this particular market that uh, you know I'm, I'm more treated like a native <laughs> mm -hmm. you know but right. so, so, so the thing is, is so what I've been happy is find out that when people are react, have a good reaction to, to, the, to the home 
the down home music that I'm going process I'm going through right now. Mm-hmm. And, but, but all these songs have been refined over the last ten years. Now the, the real problem is that that I find myself is that right now I'm sitting here and I have a MP3 CD with 99 songs I've written. Okay, <laughs> and I'm, and uh, many of these songs, I mean, uh, uh, reading uh, in a sense from Herbie's book, I mean, I mean, I always had carried on the time displacement type of thing as a groove deal, as a you know groove process in funk, mm-hmm. and so it's actually it's more of a a real a, actually usable theory that that I wrote a, a lot of songs on that have never been like. Well, they've been, they've been recorded in my recording studio, but I've never released them. And uh, this is the problem that I have right now of, 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 of how I'm going to, how I'm thinking of just maybe put these up in a digital, in a digital market. But some of them I, I would like to use with, 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 with my new group, uh, you know, group or die band. And uh, actually, I really hope that, that uh, this, this record becomes enough of a success. Uh, I, I would... I, I want to make it a series. It's going to be Groove or Die 2 and Groove or Die 3. Because, I mean, cause it, cause it has a background. It's like, you know, I, I, it's, it's, go, it's going to be a process of going forward and going back. Mm-hmm. In other words, like, I started as a string bass player <laughs> to the bassoonist, okay? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I mean, you know, I, I'm just reading, you know, I, I just got a, a beautiful email from from the drummer that used to play in my organ trio. I am playing, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I didn't play like Jimmy Smith, but like, damn, I had I, I had a left hand groove, and 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 the rest of it, Jim, I saw from Jimmy Smith himself, you know, he, 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 you know Jack McDuff, they, they showed me how to solve, how, how to set up the, the B3, and I, 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 I could, one thing I could do is I could groove. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. Wait, who was the drummer? Who was I, in that? Yeah, who, I, had, who? I had an organ trio with just an organ, organ saxophone and drums. Oh, Couldn't man. find a guitar player, cause we were, and I was doing this whole gig thing in Berlin during the Vietnam War. Can you talk about that story? Oh, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a fantastic story. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, getting drafted was, 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 was a story. I, got, I was so scared, I was so scared of going to Vietnam. My, I went to my high school teacher, Mr. Julius Lord, and I appreciate him, and, and also, and also, what was his name, Richard, and Richard's on, he played trumpets, trumpet, and, uh, they loaned me a bassoon, and I got a big evening book, and I learned, I learned all the fingerings, and it, and, uh, I could read well enough, because yeah, I was reading a lot then, uh, which, you know, and I just went, I went over there, and I sounded terrible, but I could play all the parts. Right. <laughs> So I enlisted for three years, and so they couldn't send me to Vietnam because there was only like two or three bands, that, and the fact that that could uh, accept the band of bassoonists, right? And that was my legal army job of the bassoonists. O two K O two something like that, man. Yeah, no, I was a bassoonist. I wasn't a bass player. Bass player could go dig ditches. <laughs> you know, and for and the, and the toilet, they send everybody, all, all, all the brass players and everybody else. You know, they, they send a lot of good friends, man, to, to Vietnam. Right. You know. But you got, I mean, you, 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 I want to be very clear about something because I'm more, really, what I'm more interested in, man, because I would have been scared out of my mind, too. I'm more interested in, in the idea of you taking your art and getting that organ trio. To, that's an inspiring story. Like, did that. How did that occur? How did that organ trio come together? Oh, the organ trio came together. It was was very easy. I mean, I mean, first of all, as a child, I'm listening to my father who plays stride piano. Right. Okay. You know, and and I ended up having I learned bass other than, than of course the formal part of bass, but I had to come downstairs and play with him at least a half an hour as you know as as just daily practice. You know, and he couldn't, he couldn't get all his chords right, but he had a terribly 
unbelievable left hand. You know? <laughs> and, he's, and he was left handed, and I'm left handed too. Right, me too. But I play bass and right. Yeah. So, but, but, but I don't play, I mean, I don't play left handed, okay? You know, mm-hmm. uh, so far as left handed style, uh, you know, with an upside bass and all that. No, I, I play all instruments right handed. So, the, the thing for me was that, you know, the books, after watching Jimmy Smith and, and and, and Jack McDuff and everybody down, you know, when I was when I was much younger, man, you know, even uh, when I was very young, uh, bass player uh, teacher Billy Collier, and also watching uh, and also uh, Al Tanner, who was a wonderful, wonderful uh, musician, man. Uh, I mean, really, my, what, I mean, it really started me off. I'm like six, fifteen. 14, 15 years old, man. I played with Al Tanner Trio. Um, and, and Al, and, he, and I used to come by his, his place, his hotel room. He was down, down by Lake Merritt. And, uh, get a, I get like once a week or twice a week. Um, this, he'd teach me a song, but he also would teach me theory. Hmm. You know. So far, you know, I'm on basic harmonic theory. Let's, let's, you know, if we're playing, we used to like to play a lot of the master sounds, uh, of tunes, and of course, you know, Oscar Peterson and everything, and all that stuff. Sure. But, but, like, and it was why, why a certain bass note related to a certain chord, depending on how it was voiced. Where I would play it. On, and this is this time, of course, I'm playing upright bass. I'm not playing electric. I'm this playing is this is the Paul this is the Paul Jackson I want I want to uncover is this upright monster because yeah go ahead continue. I'm actually giving you my basic education on the instrument. Oh, I, I mean, you know, the piano player showed me the right notes to play for a particular mm. song. That you know, no matter what song it was, uh, you know, I mean, when I was playing, I mean, I had to learn all, all those. I mean, everything. I mean, not. Because at that time, Jesus Christ, oh God, I, I, I was doing I was doing so much stuff. But but uh, you know, I, was, I, I mean, I played used to play the streets of Paris. Man, these are places. You know, Funkville, man. I mean, we, I closed down on Bobby Hutchison and and Woody Shaw. You know, I played with um, McCoy Tyner. Man, he's on one of the few people that were really a top grade that actually heard me play. Upright bass, and I think I was 16 years old. Right. And some little diving, he was playing at down in Berkeley, California, man. You know, I owe so much to, like, the, the, to all the Monk brothers who lived in Oakland, man. Especially Buddy, man, who continued to be a great friend, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. I did not know the Montgomery brothers lived in Oakland. 56th Street, 58th Street. My, my, my aunt lived on 56th Street. And then they had the cold call for the left bank, which is on, which is off which on San, off the side of San Padalo. I'm not, I'm not, you know, it, 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 it's a juke, it's just one of the joints, it's a juke joint, you know. Right. And they, have then, then they had the sessions up in, uh, God damn, the, the police, the pizza place up on the hill in Berkeley, man. I mean, Laval's, Laval's pizza place, man. You go up there and play for, and, and, and you know, for a hot dog or a piece of pizza and five dollars, maybe. <laughs> maybe five bucks. The the maybe the, the uh, yeah, because like was was you eat the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> did Montgomery like did Wes have a, he was able oh, to man. yeah? I was with Farrell Saunders and 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 Bob uh, what was his name Bob Dixon Bob King. Fucking great guitar player, but I mean, like, as a trio. Wow. And I'm, this is all of my teams, okay? But this is before I even got drafted. <laughs> <laughs> That's unreal. You know, so I know, 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 I Came up to me. I saw Buster Williams in Korea. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was joking around with him. I said, "Man, so the only thing I, I, I said, I love Herbie. I said, I really love Herbie. 
But you know, when I think about after, but after I hear Buster Williams play upright, and I love him, you know, right? You know, they play up like that. Of course, you know, God, you know, right? Get wrong. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean all the beautiful bass players, man. You know, you know, it's not about you know, you know, Buster's Bust, Bust, a special one. Yeah. yeah. So you're are you you know, you're playing you're playing. I'm just I'm just locked into the fact that like you know when I when I paid ten thousand dollars or whatever it was man for for my upright bass it didn't have no tone controls on it. <laughs> right, right. There was something there, there was there, there was something about I was talking to a, I was listening back to this quote from Junie Booth, great bass player, and he he was telling yeah. he was telling me a story about McCoy. This just relates to like digitization and technology and the advent of like the increase of technology that, you know, McCoy would, would get a piano totally whacked out, you know, busted up. And then he would find the chords, he would find the notes that were the, were in key and he'd avoid the bad notes. He'd play the piano back into tune. I mean, I just think that you guys were dealing with so much authentic music. I don't, it's un, it's unbelievable to me that you came of age at a time when acoustic instrumentation was being merged with electric instrumentation. And that's, in yeah, my, well, yeah, in my mind, that's why there was this expansion of music. And then obviously you could throw drugs in there and just places to play and just, just love. I mean, there's just a lot more love and I really want, and I still feel like that's why you're in Japan because there's just a lot of love there. Yeah, well, the thing is that like, you yeah, I'm like a technological freak. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I got five computers in my house, and I got, you know, you know, a, a complete network going up here into, in, 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 you know, in, in, in another city that, 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 you know, my friend was a total video editing, professional video editing thing, and then I have my, me and my partner, Hedy Katsu, uh, Hedy Katsu Noritake, get his name right. So I'm meeting some. We have Studio B in Tokyo, which actually is where I produce it and did everything funk on the stick. Funk on the you stick. You know, I mean, I have a real recording studio. Okay, with logic and but also with analog. That's the difference. We we have, you know we don't use plugins because we actually bought the machines. We have an 1174. It isn't a plugin. You can turn the dials. You know, you know what I mean? You know, we, we kept that part of the, the studio absolutely live, and that's how I use it. You know, my approach on bass was purely technological. I wanted, this, I felt I had to play an electric bass. I wanted to get an electric bass that was as close to an upright bass as I could possibly make it. That is what Geraldine is. Geraldine is... Of, you know, that was that was the concept that I was built from, you know, with uh, Jesus, Joey Casal, or whatever that name anyway. Uh, violinist, violinist player, man. I found the body, you know, it had, it had found, found the old body, it, it was all tricked up from, from uh, it painted weird, man, from, from some hippie, from some hippie thing, and, uh, you know, I had to strip the paint off of it. And, I think it's a 1951, 1953 uh, precision shaped like a telecaster. Wow. Okay, then, then I then I went over there with him, between him and I, 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 and then also on Stars guitars, the old Stars guitars, that didn't exist anymore. And Jerry Garcia's, you know, that that group, you know, that started the whole stuff, the group that started Olympic. Okay, mm -hmm. this is pre Olympic. Okay, you know, because I'm going way back, but the, the, you know, and talk, and at that time, there, at the automat, and, and of course, and, 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 uh, the Stars of Times was across the street, 
I met I met Bartolome before he was you know he he was in the he was selling his tickets his, his uh, pickups as high A's. He had the high A's set up. Okay, <laughs> and I I talked asked him and, and he he said he'll try it and he did it and he made three pickups. That, that had isolated, he had somehow shielded the wiring because they were all in one, one pickup. So it was a four channel pickup. And I had it wired, Geraldine wired for it. So it was the first four channel base. Wow. Well, actually five channel. I put, a, I put one of his new high gain pickups in, uh, high output pickup that, uh, for mono. So Geraldine, when we recorded, when we recorded, you know, it was, you know, it was engineers, I mean, so what, what engineer, you know, even on the upright day, say it used one good microphone, but like I had five out there. That is, yeah. that's why you have that, 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 wow, that's incredible. But as far as the field, see, tell me, talk about the field. The bass, the bass sings. It just sings. Right. You know, I mean, it really, I mean, an upright, even, I mean, yeah, I, I take my time to part the construction of lines so that like that like I can sit back in the pocket and hold and hold, and then where the there is a significant part of the music that 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 that, that, that you that, that, you know I mean it's like writing it, you know that part was that part came out while we were playing. I could do that with Herbie, and we could do it almost instinctively. That's the way some of these, you know, I mean, we, we, we talk about a lot of heavy, heavy stuff between, I mean, time displacement is really between me, Harvey, and Herbie. Well, me and Harvey Mason started it mm-hmm. and got Herbie into the thing. And then, then, then Herbie found out that, like, you know, I was into, you know, <laughs> quantum physics and all those other shit. And, and, <laughs> and I, and I told him which way to count, uh, uh, actual proof, and he and he didn't believe it until he tried it, and then it worked. <laughs> Dude, I I love this. I love this, Jack Paul Jackson. Actual actual proof was done right around right around on, the, on my on my birthday. I remember that that whole scene real quick. I had I was so sick of playing that bass line, and I, and, and, and my, I said, Michael, let's play this song. Let's let me play, you know, our funk stuff. I said, I, said, I, said, I, said, I, said, I said, this is the line I'll play, and I'm not going to give it up. And it'll flip through the tune. And we went through the thing, and then Herbie said, he didn't really get it at first. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get it. I think he says in the book, he, did, he knows he didn't get it. We know he didn't get it. Then I told him, that, you know, it was like, hey, you know, I said, this is a jazz, Jay. James Brown tune. <laughs> I love you know, it. I said, I said, I said, think about, think about just catching those these accents. Bum, 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 gig. I mean, if, if you think and you and, and let everything else be space until you know you're supposed to play that part, then you can express yourself. And we were right together. I don't think we did more than one or two takes of that song. I, I, I really believe it's his first day of doing it. When we, when we just we counted it off and just hit. And that's what actual proof is. But you were, you were, you were really tired of playing a, a certain bass line, so you were going to play it a different way? I want to make sure I'm clear on this story. At, at, that, point, at that point, my whole, my whole job with Kirby changed. <laughs> I would always play a different bass line. Okay, so 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 what was it before that? Explain what was before and then what was different and then after. Oh God, uh, it, it used to be dum 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 bum ba da dum ba da dum dum. Right, right, <laughs> right. Okay, okay. Yep. That's exactly what it was. In fact, I have a tape of me playing that in New York in 1974. I actually reverted it back. I need to hear that tape. That, I, so you're just playing that. Uh, okay, so continue, and then and then you were like so tired of that, and you just started. It, well, listen, I, I, listen, I, I could transmit it to you now, but, 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 but I can't. Uh, you have to you have to contact me on, on so far as uh, 
that I can actually send you the file. That's fu- don't worry about it. When you have time, sure, I'd love to check it out. It sounds, but I would love to hear that. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, 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 no. The, the thing is, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I, you right. know, <laughs> what, yeah. It's amazing. No. But what's even more amazing is where we took uh, Sly. Yeah. No, Sly became Sly became became my. Uh, my fun part. That, 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 that's the thing Sly kept me in the group. Because I just, you know, then after the break, everybody would turn around and look at me and say, okay, what is this guy, what is he going to play tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, I, and that was it. Oh, man. Yeah, I... I was let loose with something I don't, you know, I didn't even know where it was. Hmm. But the thing is, I could, improve, I could, I could actually repeat it in the same place. So they, they were the ones that were screwed up on time, not me. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I, I was, you know what? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I you know, I, I thought they, they knew. I, first of all, the, the biggest clue was that I was not going to start on one. Right, right. They knew that. The majority of these lines that you hear, I think even, even the ones on the ones that are record, usually start after the one. I love this. I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm very kind of strong on that I, I, uh, so far as the concept. But I kind of like it because like, it makes the bass drum played on one part of my bass line. Right, exactly. That's the, no, I, I, I now, I, but as a listener, as a non musician, I, I'm, and I'm, this is really helpful. Continue. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, but that's the concept. Okay. Mm hmm. Exactly. That's right. And I, can you? Uh, how did the this um, whole thing come about with Eddie Fisher? I'm oh, pardon. One more time. Yeah. No. How did how, how did this thing come about? Third Cup with Eddie Fisher. You know the album you were on, oh. Upright Bass. It was on. It was on the Cadet label. Yeah, Eddie Fisher. It, it was it was you on upright bass, Eddie Fisher, and uh, oh no, 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 I mean, it's, it's, that, that's the thing. I'm consistent in that story. My father took me to uh, I think it was a Black Hawk, and they had a kitty corner, and I saw Miles Davis uh, with John Coltrane, Cannonball Adderley, and and I think well, and, and JJ Johnson. And to to Ronald Ronald Hayes, but the, the, the thing was Paul Chambers, mm-hmm. and that big beautiful chirp bass. And I heard that sucker. And that was over. I want one of those. And then when I went back to my my, I went back to I went back to my junior high school teacher. And he gave me a little, you know, a little half size, three quarter size bass, right? You know, and he said, okay, this is what you do. You know, put it right here, you hold it like this, and then you just pull that string right down there on the bottom as hard as you can. Man. And when I felt how that felt, I'm 14, you know, I mean, you come on, you know, I'm a kid, okay? When you feel something vibrate between your legs for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I carried that instrument home every night. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, you were getting off. 
The, I want the player that. <laughs> I feel good to play, you know. <laughs> and that's and that's what and that's what the whole thing has been about all ever since, man. It feels good to play base for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, is it is? Tell me about the uh, I I my my wife is Taiwanese. I've never been to Japan, but I I just feel like you know you're there because. That's where the spirit. I mean, t- explain why you. Yeah. Just explain why you you continue to stay there. Why do you enjoy living there? It's a it's a homogeneous society that works. <laughs> In what way? And and, and, and it, there's own work and it's own well, like like most homogeneous societies. And there's a lot of all, all right. And and and, and, and yeah, if you. Put yourself in and in, 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 in have a useful uh, thing like, it, like I'm, I'm, I've been teaching. I've been I've been, I've been, I've been playing with, 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 the, with the locals for I mean for thirty years. I mean I, I've been going way back with with some of the original people that you know that started the market now. And I've been watch, I've watched it go from you know where everybody coming over here was like really you know idolized and everything else, and then I seem like you know, these guys. Did, and they developed their own Michael Jacksons and everything else. Now they got and they got their own thing, the cheap thing, and, and that's even, they're even taking that out uh, to the rest of the world. I mean, you know, so like, uh, I mean, I, I, there's, there's some things that you can see here that you can't see any place else in the world. But the one thing I can do is that, like, I can be at peace. I can be at peace. Mm-hmm. You know, I can be like, you know, I used to be. You know, well, hey, I I need to go borrow butter. Butter, I go to my next door neighbor. <laughs> right? No, I, I, that's beautiful. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, I, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not worried about somebody breaking in, in my house or something. <laughs> you know, people, you know, actually stop on the street and help old ladies up. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's more of that. Not that more of a, a trip. And uh, you know, more human. And also, and also, yeah, and, also and, 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 and also on my religious thing, which I, which Herbie started a long time ago, in 1930, 20, 1973, Okay, with, you know, President Kennedy and all the other other stuff. I mean, hey, listen. Okay, I, I, you know, I, I stayed in it, but I wasn't like a total participant so far as the group thing. But uh, I was, in, I'm in it. You know, I, I mean, it's so a part. I mean, you know, I keep my Christian values, but I live by a Buddhist philosophy. Okay? That's right. Okay, buddy, I love it. I mean, I, I'm with you, brother. And, and, and you know, and, and the Buddhist philosophy, that part of it, this makes me. It's, it's about respecting all humans. That's right. You know, and and yourself. Yeah, I mean, you know, as being human, you know. And, you know, and I, I mean, I, but I mean, I, it, were you? I, yeah, go ahead, continue. I have, I have, too, I have too many, I have too many uh, like Christian, you know, back, too much of a Christian background in one in one sense. Entirely, entirely give it up, you know, because it's more of a thing of like, hey, it's it's all the gods. It might be one for you, or you might have ten, or you might have a, a thousand. But you know, like I, I like. Like Ray Bradbury, you know, the nine billion names of God. I mean, you know, hey, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a no-brainer. You know, something is greater than yourself. <laughs> but yet that, Buddh- what, that Buddhist philosophy, that ethos, is, is more, you're more at peace in that in in the east in japan because i just feel like the christian values that you talk about are the ones that are yeah. not focused on in this country the more punitive right. ones are focused on which is why it's it's very divisive when it shouldn't be but in in, in japan you get that high am i right about that am i feeling that well no, no the thing is that you get it in action right right people people in, in America, they practice Buddhism. Okay, mm-hmm. the word is 
they practice Buddhism, okay? Japan, Japanese do not practice Buddhism. They live in it. Right. It's in their regular lives. As, as a person, they live it. You understand? It's a different when you're in a whole society actually living in Buddhism, you know, rather than trying to practice being a good Buddhist. Absolutely. You learn, you learn, so, you learn so much more, man. You, you, know, you, you know, I mean, and look, I mean, this is a crowded little society, man. You, it takes, you know, you can't, you can't just get mad I'm just some, because somebody, you know, Cut you off, or what the hell? <laughs> it happens. <laughs> you know. No, I, I, I yeah. You know, somebody's going to be in your way all the time, but at the same time, if you look hard enough, somebody's going to be helping you. Yeah, Taiwan is Taiwan is very similar. <clears throat> Have you been to play in Taiwan at all? Pardon? Have you ever gone to Taiwan to play music? Taiwan. <laughs> oh, not no, not a, not no, a, not I, very far from. No, I, 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 I don't think I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I went I went I went mostly Korea. I went Malaysia, Singapore. Not so much time. Not, not so much Taiwan. I think Taiwan and China is something I think is, is uh, we're going to we're going to explore. Uh, uh, right now, I'm dealing I'm, I'm dealing with. Uh, you know, with, with, with one record company, but I'm, I'm, I'm also doing some other some other thing as I'm uh, getting ready to expand my my, my recording studio and, and to, uh, in the, so far as the digital aspect of it, because I want to start. I, I already have the songs that I need to record for my next record, and I want I want to get ahead of that. You know, and and then and I keep on continuing to, so far promoting this one. I have. Uh, I have a backlog of, of, of songs and I need to, I really need to put these songs out because nobody in America is heard them. And, and some of the songs have like, they're, they're, they're <coughs> dumb little ditties, but that, that they have the, the, some of the mathematical properties, you know, that you learn them, you know, I mean, somebody's going to take it and take it and make it into some other kind of funk. That's right. That's right. You know, and that's what I want. I, you know, I need to hand this over to some somebody younger. You know. Can you, you know, talk? Like, I, I really. Yeah. I, can you? Could you? Um, talk a little bit about when the Headhunters just be, you know Herbie left and you guys just had that band. Can you talk about the uh, the groove that you guys were creating? Because those albums, even now for me, uh, they're just so different. It's an acquired taste, and it's because of the rhythms. And I just, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about. Um, well, the thing is, the thing is Herbie, Herbie himself is a natural player, okay? But Herbie, <laughs> the real truth of the matter is that Herbie didn't know a damn thing about funk, <laughs> okay? It's, yeah, that was me and Mike's right. job. Right. The teacher, the teacher, you know. By example, to show him exactly what 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 the funk was, because Mark, because 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 like me and uh, Mike used to practice any known number of style of pockets before beat back tight pocket loose pocket, you know. And I'm saying, I mean, we had all that stuff down, you know, from the from the straight back back to the sixteenth note, you know, Oakland killer. You know, jam. You know, what I mean, you know that that was our expertise. You know, we even had our own band called Group Therapy, which is really a crazy, pretty crazy nine-piece band. You know, but it, but it, but it smoked. What, know, what 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 uh know. what uh what year was that? Oh Jesus! This, this is this is uh, <laughs> seventy. 70? Yo, where those are the recordings? Yeah, yeah. I cannot even yeah, yeah. imagine what that must sound like. <laughs> oh, hey, listen, man. Mike actually kind of saved me because uh, during the, I had a, I had a bad marriage. Mm-hmm. Going anyway, he did too, and uh, <laughs> but I was working out. He was working at a little club called the Robin Hood, which is down in 
Sun Valley Mall, and I was the manager of the Sherman and Clay uh, <laughs> Penny Oswald Company that sold ham and organs and everything else. That's well, I, that's all that I did that so I could play organ every day. No, that's awesome. Mm. Oh yeah, oh man, I was selling organs too, yeah. <laughs> I was selling organs. and so I then like, and I, and since I, I was the manager of the store, I, I just closed up the store. But I, I I took an organ and wheeled it down, you know, a uh, uh, hundred meters it was to, to to the club and sat in there and played with him and 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 and, uh, and this guitar player, you know. We had a little tree. We just played that. We played blues and, you know, hum, This is so... Hum, this hum, is... Th this no, I'm like, uh, this is like an epiphany. I'm like, now I know Paul's bass lines started with the organ. I mean, you were working on those unreal bass lines already. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure. The left hand was it. I you know, and, and getting the subtitles and everything else was, was, was also a trick, you know. You know. I learned, I, learned, I, learned that, I learned that style, you know. Yeah, I mean... It's, 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 it's really it's really great having having the upright having the foot pedal and the, and the hand organ organ style down you know and now and now I'm, I transfer all that information into the bass mm -hmm. except that I add the mathematics of like of, 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 of you know of time displacement with it I mean the time displacement gives it's actually is a way of playing in such a place as to get the most emotional content into whatever it is you're playing. I don't know if I can say that again. <laughs> well, you can go. You can. You can. That, no, you can. Extra, that, you can extrapolate that, on. No, you can extrapolate on that. That's the, that's the, that's the principle. Time it's displacement. Is to learn how to play whatever you play at a point in the music so that you get the most emotional content out of what you play. That's the theory. And I can teach them. I'm the only one I know that can teach them. Did you have mentors to talk? Did you just learn that on the bandstand naturally, or did you have people that infused that in you? No, no. They, no, they only get the people that right now, uh, you know, mainly they, they get their experience in. You know, there, there, there's, a, there's, there's, uh, there's some natural, some really natural players over here. Uh -huh. Like Ken General Hino, for one, a real young bass player. You know, he's got all the other chops and everything else, but I, have, but I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk to him exactly about that, which is something I definitely want to do. Yeah, no, you it's, it, that's, yeah. you have the... A, yeah. a, person, a natural person that knows these things. I mean, you know, all the top bass players know this already, instinctively. Right, I like how you I keep, mean, you know, you're, 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 you're going back to the root of it, yeah. You're, you're, I mean, but all these guys, you know, Chuck, Chuck, God, Chuck Rainey. You know, the thing that's cool is that Chuck, when I interviewed Chuck, he was talking about really loving to go see the tuba players. Because, you know, you, you you go back in time, that was the, those were the original plunky, funky bass lines, you know. And then to, and then the then the advent of the foot pedal, and then, of course, the upright bass. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Monk Montgomery, first guy on out to be recorded on electric bass, 1953 with Art Farmer. Yeah. And, and, and then all of a sudden you're just extrapolating on that and, uh, really talking up a storm, mixing all those genres, uh, but with the hard bop background. And that to me is just, yeah. and that's just yeah. the coolest, yeah. thing, you know, it, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. You know, I mean, see, John Ray is just, God, it's, 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 it's a salesman's term. So I, 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 I mean, I'm thinking about just music right now. Of course. You know, so of course. When it comes to bass, you know, you know, I care more about the bass player than, 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 than the bass style or what somebody else, if you want to tag him this with like one of the baddest cats, I mean, you know, that, that, uh, and that's a team. So far as groove, a natural pocket, 
Smith, the original recording that Bootsy Collins made on Give It Up, Turn Me Loose, that's the shit. I don't know what he felt or what happened at the time, Jack, but he played it. (laughs) 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 You know, see, I I go by what I hear a person play. You know, that's how I know, that's how I I know them. That's a great, great, great. Yeah, you want to? You want to? Did you? Did you enjoy? Did you enjoy uh, playing? But not playing. But did you? Uh, did you get close with Bobby Hutcherson and Woody Shaw? Yes. In fact, me, <laughs> me and Lenny White, and uh, I think uh, he goes maybe Cecil Bernard, mm-hmm. but I think he goes by Hotep now in New York. We closed the both band club with them. Wow. That's right. Eddie oh. Henderson also used to play when, when Woody Shaw was there. That's right. Eddie. He used to be in the band, right on right on the visit there. Oh, that's that, you know, in San Francisco. Yeah, I was an upright bass player. Playing well, all those tunes. Those were interesting tunes. And as, that, that, yeah. That's when Lenny White had the, had the, the steel... <laughs> People like oil barrel for an 18 inch drum. <laughs> 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 I'm way back there, okay? I mean, I used to play in a place called Streets of Paris where they used to put, you know, they used to serve the scotch in, 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 you know, in the coffee cup. You know, and I never drank at that time. Don't drink now either anymore. Sure. But they just, they, they poured into coffee cups and you just, people would sit there and swing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I go to a gig from nine to one, you know, ten to ten to six, and then you know, seven thirty to twelve. I mean, on a weekend. Did you ever get involved with the Fillmore District down there, or the organ trios? Absolutely. Uh, please break this. Please br- break this. Forget about that. What about? I mean, going down the original down the other side of Slim Jenkins at Esther's Orbit Room. Mm. That's where they built the post office in, in, in Oakland. You know, I'm, I was way down there. I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I know Slim Jenkins. Every, well, those places used to be on Seventh Street in Oakland. You know, and I live, I live on right on on Peralta. I live right off of you know. Yeah, I knew where the freeway fell down. So you would be one of the yeah. like who was who kind of spirit? Because I know that there were. Guys, you know, on, on in the film, or that was San Francisco side, but I'm not as familiar with kind of the leaders of the of the of the organ trios in the Oakland side. That's really fascinating to me. Like, you know, the guy. Were you telling people to show up at six in the morning, or were you one of the cats getting the calls at six in the morning? Oh no! Uh, well, I, oh, I'm sorry. I need to question. No, I mean like 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 the organ trios. They play at these clubs till midnight, or you know, early. Oh you know, yeah, that's. I mean, all those, yeah, those all those old clubs. Man, they were open. You know, the, the Sportsman Club and Jesus Christ, they, you know, a California Hotel. You know, my father used to work there as a security guard. Jesus, you know. No, I guess what I'm what I'm getting at is the idea that like the club would reopen at six in the morning and have live organ music in there. To me, that's the most ridiculous thing in the world. No, actually, they're not, they're not live organ music. Actually, 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 actually that means that you that was usually like a quartet or something. Sure. Or sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were they were playing. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he had, he had Marvin Holmes and the Uptights and all, and all, Jesus Christ, man, you know, and all these really groups, man, you know, the soul singers, you know. Hey, uh, had, you know, Paul, the, give me. The big club down the, down the West Oakland, man, with the largest dance floor in, in, in the Bay Area. You know, I had Caesars over in San Francisco. I used to go play Latin. I, I, when I was 14, I was playing with Caesar. In South Sausalito, on some little boat, you know, my father used to come pick me up and take me back home. You know, I'm playing, and that's how I learned the Latin. I learned clave. I learned clave from Victor Victor Pantoja. Then that's that's what got my time together. The, the actually, you know, to be able to even deal with with, with, with learning the mathematical concepts of of of, uh, of uh, you know, the 
the Latin concept has always been the stabilization part of my time feeling. You know, even and no matter what music I'm playing. You knew you played with, you with, with Caesar. You can, you can do perfect time. So you're this guy. What was it Caesar Escarunas? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, uh, not, no, I mean, no, I was playing with Jesus. I was playing the Brothers, uh, Escovita Brothers, but then I, they used to, I, before I even played with them, I played with a Latin group called the Guzman Brothers. And the Guzman Brothers used to play, we used to play old Mexican weddings all the time, you know. And that was really, that was really a trip, because, like, I didn't play bass with them. Well, I, I did play bass with them, too. I played bass with them, and then some of the bands I played. Actually, I played. I played the uh, Val Trombone. That was, so you were playing all that. in the Guzman Brothers? Were you playing like mariachi music? You were playing. You were playing Afro Cuban music. No, I'm playing. I'm, I'm playing like you know. I'm playing like Mexican wedding songs. I'm playing all all the you know you know Juanitas and and, and Montunos and everything. Oh, else. I love yeah. it! I you love it. Them, we're reading them straight out of the book. Huh? I love it. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, man, no, that, that was the big thing. Is Latin, Latin music, man, shit. Latin music paid for my bass. Yeah, but the Pantoa, when did you first meet Pantoa? Well? When did you first meet Pantoa? Oh, Pantoa? Yeah, when did you first start connecting oh. with him? Oh, uh, him and Armando Peraglia, maybe 15... In what setting, though? Uh, and I'm 67 now. Wow. Wow. That's how long, that's how long we are. That's right. I, I, was, you know, I was very, very, very upset when Victor passed um, some couple of years ago. <laughs> you know. Those guys taught you the clave. They taught you the time. They were instrumental in your, in your rhythm, in time. You, you, you need that in no time. <laughs> That's not how it goes. <laughs> no, no, it's not that stone thing. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying that pocket too, Jack. Oh, you man. know, but, 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 you, but you have to, you know, it's, funda- it's the fundamental that, that people usually miss. You know, uh, you know, I mean, it's. it's you know, if you want to be, if you want to really be a professional, I mean, that can be, you know, the more of the fundamentals that you actually have are, are the things that are going to really make a big difference, you know, uh, in the end, you know, because uh, you'll, you'll find out that it becomes useful in, in, in your, in your, in your, comp- within your compositions and also if you if you if you have try to keep a good memory of all your experiences, you know. So so you know, and which I I exercise my mind on. I like to sit and think before I do something. You know, it really it makes it you know. Then, then I mean you know it's you know I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but like goddamn, I can figure some shit out. <laughs> Well, your team, well, your, your teaching. The thing is, Mike yeah. Mellon has always been able to know if a certain bass line will fit a certain drum rhythm. You know, not, not just boom back, boom back. I'm not into that. Yeah, that 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 was the destru- That was the A and R destruction of the industry. The backbeat. You know, is, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, this, this way. Think of the actual proof is is, a, is designer rhythms, okay? Mm-hmm. And then think I got fifty songs like that. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, you've never heard. <laughs> you know, I, P. P- Jack, uh, I, I, uh, as we wrap up part one here, I, I, I wanted to, um. My my only advice for you 
is to get this, just share this stuff. I mean, obviously, there's you want to make sure that if if you're concerned about, I'm going to put some things of it out, and some things I might just. I think I'm going to just put all, for educational purposes. I am going to put on my web page. Exactly. 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 <laughs> share the love, man, because you know it's good for the soul and. Um, I, I, I gotta I, I gotta go uh, tend to my younger baby. She just woke up from her nap, but I I'd like to do a part two with you, like in the next cu- few days, if you want to, if you're up for that. Okay, uh, okay. Just send, send me send me a mail. Yeah, we'll we'll, and, con- we'll uh, connect on Facebook, we'll, but we'll talk about it. yeah. Okay. It was great. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll talk. It was great to talk to you, Paul. Okay, hey, hey listen, man. It's nice, man. I'm just, by the way, I'm recording this so I can send it to my uh, web page. Maybe I can put it down in text. Okay. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll transcribe. I'll, listen, we'll just we'll do part two, man. So you know, we'll have we'll have a ball again and have a, have a beautiful day. Okay. Okay, you too. Okay, thank you very much, Jake. Later on, Paul. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, bye bye. I mean, I've done so much research and work. I I just there's no one I'd rather ask than than uh, you know. Your your early earliest like the most effective kind of learning environment in Oakland that you had was it was it a mentor was it just in your garage like single handedly what was gave you the most growth early on in your musicianship? It was many mentors actually, and uh, and, and and of course you know the first one the one that told me all was everything else I needed and that was like. Hey, listen. <laughs> right. Listen, watch, and, and you know, and and listen some more. This is the way. This is the way it's done. You know. You know. And, and so, uh, and, and of course, you had to play it. You know. And uh, and and I was fortunate enough to have people that when I played something wrong, <laughs> they told me about it, and I went back and learned how to play it right. Who t- who would tell you like t- can you drop some na- like, who would tell you Paul we can do better? I can be better. No, I, can, I, I always yeah. I always knew I could be better. Right. I always, I mean when I was listening to the musicians that I wanted to sound like at the time and I knew I didn't sound like it. I, I mean I was practicing the sound like them. You know. I mean, I mean, I have people that are very close uh, in, in, in Oakland. You know, there are so many be- beautiful musicians already. Mm. You know, I mean, and and uh, that, that you could really, that you could really, and you can trust the musicians. You know, you know, um, it's, it's you know, we, I, there's there's, there's uh, only a few bass players that. Yeah, he even had a kind of a, a, a rivalry, but like we were, but like it was like, hey, <laughs> you know, listen to what this cat is playing, right, right, because he's playing the right, he's playing right. the right, he's playing the right shit, you know, right, yeah, right, and really. I mean, one of my best friend, absolute best friend, is Harley White Senior, you know, and it's funny, his uh, son Harley White Junior plays. Also plays a great bass, and you know, he's a great bass player too. You know, and so when I get back there in October, these are the people I really want to see. Yeah, I want to. I want to make. Know? I want to make sure we go through that laundry list of cats. Uh, did you know Ed Kelly, the organ player? Ed Kelly. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Right? Tell me, wasn't he? Wasn't he one of those cats? He was one of those guys you're talking about. I used to play I, uh, Ed Kelly. If it wasn't for Ed Kelly, I wouldn't be able to play play the bass lines. I mean, I, you know, I mean, he, he, showed me, he showed me all the stops on the organ. I played with the organ, and I used, and I virtually learned how to play his left hand on bass. Wow! Wow! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. That. And that was some real shit, and I can still do it. <laughs> what was the what was the club you were playing? Did you guys have a steady gig with like with a with a trio? Oh my God, Jesus Christ! We're talking about like Esther's Orbit Room, man. And, <laughs> and, and I mean, and, and the club, you know, Carousel. I mean, the jukebox. I mean, we're talking about clubs that no longer exist, man. I mean, you know, I mean. Lavelle's up in the, in the mountain. I mean, you know, I played there with Peter Scavi 
bingo, man, for hot dogs and pizza. I mean, come on. That is un- <laughs> Just get me back there. <laughs> I went to the whole thing. <laughs> you know. Huh. You know, I mean, we, we played in places just so we could play. You, you know, did you... It wasn't necessarily a, a monetary thing because it, it wasn't just, it wasn't there, you know. I mean, all the juke joints, the whatever, man, you know. Like, you know, like I, I was reading an article of Dave, uh, Dave Garibaldi said, because you know, when he first met us, when he first got out of the Army, man, and it's before the time our car started, you know. And they were going down to the on Broadway club, you know. And we used to we used to, and we used to call them down there, man. Especially when they found out the whole band and everything else, man. You know, I'm in Rocko was a tight partner. I mean, God, man. You know, everybody was involved with everybody. You know, and was and was supporting everybody's shit. You know, um, and there's and Michael there, had a group. Yeah, go ahead. Had a group called Group Therapy, man. That like, you know, had we known more about like. A little bit more about the music business. That would have been a, that would have been a second part of power on power. It was completely, you know, half the more than half the members of group therapy went on to make that second. So the, I mean, but with Mike playing drums, I mean, what was the was it the sound of uh, was it like a a, a Latin R and B. Uh, rock, soul, f- I mean, how would you describe, how was it different from Tower of Power? I, I gather you guys would have been as big, but how would the music be different? No, we had, we had, we had our own 16th note punk thing, uh, but the, the, difference, the difference was, because I also played upright, uh, like Jack Walrat, was like, really, uh, I mean, I, you know, I'm his great friend, you know, and, 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 and he's also really a very close friend, yes. in New York. I mean, everybody who's in New York except me, you know. Uh, <laughs> You're smart, man. You're very smart. You're very smart. You're very smart. You know, I don't know, hey, man. I'm a country boy. I guess I got to stay out here. <laughs> you know, but, but I'm doing fine, you know. Uh-huh. But, but uh, like, like Jack, man, wrote some of the most craziest stuff all the time, man. And we had uh, Jack, we had this dumb man who, uh, who played with Michael McDonald and everything else, you know, and, and, and uh, wow. Jesus. Uh, we had uh, Paul Pody, we had Jeff Pitson, man, who's also well-known, man. And we had, we had like, our own, uh, you know, Return to Forever group, you know. Uh, we, we love had, it. We had, I mean, we had, we had all kinds of different <laughs> groups that we had, you know, the, just the play of stuff, you know. And playing, and playing a lot of original music, which, by the way, I just got my archives off and, and found a lot of it. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, brother, I mean, some of that group therapy stuff would be a needed tonic. Uh, you know, I mean, again, you're still... I, Tell me about uh, the the group you're in now and the and the album. I mean, let's promote this album coming out. Oh, the, oh man, the group uh, the group I'm in now is just a, is a, is a wonderful uh, wonderful group of, of of musicians, man. I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that like for musicians that have, have very little opportunity to actually be together, except for these tours. I mean, you know, my, the magnificent Dantone, man, I mean, this cat is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, but he lives in England. And my drummer, uh, Tony Ratch, he lives, he lives in France. But he also works with, with, uh, Fred Wesley's group. So he comes to America sometimes, you know. Right. And, and does different stuff, you know. Uh, my, my, one of my next moves is going to be, you know, hopefully, because I'm trying to line up something, is I'm coming home. I gotta come home. Mm-hmm. And, and home, I need Oakland. And I want to get, I, I, I've been talking to some people, my, my people there, man, and, uh, I want, I want to do a thing. I mean, I have, October 15th is my 50th high school reunion. Wow. And I want to have a man. Wow. Okay. And I'm going to try to make that happen. You know. How do you, well, how can I, how can I help, how can I help to, uh, get the word out about that? Well, uh, I don't know. I'm, I won't. I won't you know, be I'm there. Sure. I won't be there. I live in Tucson, but I'll be more than. I mean, I guess just putting this oh, out out there is good okay. enough. Depends. You know, if, if you got an end with Yoshi, give me that, give me a hand. But anyway, but that's that's what that's I'm right. I'm with you. Yeah, you know. But 
and and you can see if I can do something. And then I have you know Roger Glenn, my that's my cousin. I love it. Cousin. I love and, it. You know, and 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 Denise Perrier, of course, that's my sister. You know, so like I want to bring them, and I like to bring a lot of those, those, those really good local talent around. And I'm trying to to figure out a way where I can bring my 18 year old Tony Williams from Japan <laughs> to, to play with. Me. Just and that's just to give the crowd a shock, man. Because like I, yeah. I remember the shock I had when when I first heard Tony Williams uh, at 16 years old on Broadway. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I was there. <laughs> you know. He was with, was he with was he with Miles at that time? Yeah, man, I, that's when I saw Miles was, was, was when, he, when he first brought Tony Williams. It was Ron Carter and, and Herbie, and they you know they shut down the, they shut down the liquor cabinet, man, because this cat's sixteen years old. <laughs> 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 right, but this yeah. dude, what's his, uh, what, his name's Tiger? What's his name? What's this guy's name? This drummer. Uh, the drummer's name is Riku Tiara. He's a Jap- young Japanese genius. Well, he's, uh, right, now, right, now, right now he's playing with a, with a, with a, with a Japanese super group called May J, the singer, you know, right. that, that's doing a lot, and he, and he plays with me, you know, so, so that, that's been, uh, we, in fact, we just did a con, uh, a, a concert that we set up in Japan with Tony Maiden on guitar, the director of Rufus. I mean, my man. I mean, I've been dying to play with Tony Maiden, and Tony Maiden came over there and played <laughs> played two gigs with him. I want to go. Wait, hold on. I got to go back for a second. And he just, we just, I, I, you know, I, I, I we had fifteen minutes for rehearsal. <laughs> And this man played as if he had played with us for twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> but what? Tell me more. Okay, so you want to listen? I understand you want to have a big blowout event. But what else is calling? What is that, What else is calling you back to Oakland? What else? What are the other priorities when you're in Oakland? I need to see my family. You know, I have I have, I have a couple of sisters that are ill, and I really need to see my family. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah. I need to eat. I need to eat some Everett Jones barbecue and have some gumbo. <laughs> I'm, you know, you know, not to mention see all my friends, man. You know, yeah. You know, if I if I if I if I can take off, I'll, I'll probably take I'll take off almost a week and, and and come back and do it. You know, rehearse with some with some of the guys like I mean, you know, Tony Sanders, like all, all kinds of bass players, of, of like drummers. You know, Jesus, you know, I you know. I, I want if I if I can get this if I can get this pulled off and 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 and, and does do it at a decent you know decent rate, so that like uh, you know, I, I can I, I can pull a few people here. I, it'd be wonderful if I could pull my my entire trio from Japan. Over, I'd like you know. I'm, I'm trying to get. I, I, I'm, I'll be quite honest. You know, I, I think I, I. I mean, I know that you know the pay scales are a lot different. But well, yeah. I mean, thing is that like you know, uh, me, Lenny White, Bobby, uh, Eddie Henderson, right? Or uh, and that's even before that, uh, Woody Shaw. We 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 closed down the the whole band. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> We opened it and closed it down. You know. You know it's yeah, it's so unfortunate. Like, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, yeah. You know, I used to call the gigs at the at the streets of Paris, man. You know, you know, that's, that's, you know, they used to pour the liquor in the coffee cup. You know, at, at six o'clock in the morning. You know, <laughs> did you get a chance to play at the <laughs> Fillmore at all? Yes. The original Fillmore. The original Fillmore. The original Fillmore. I played there with Herbie. I, are you? On the, on the head hunters, nineteen ninety eight, and what? We had a huge song truck there. Everybody came. We should have recorded it. How? How did you originally? When was the first time you really connected or met Herbie Hancock? Nineteen seventy three, nineteen seventy two. Yeah. With the Pointer Sisters, I was doing the Pointer Sisters' very first album. Okay, mm-hmm. the very first one. Mm-hmm. And uh, David Rubinson 
Um, so that's Kirby. Kirby had just finished an audition. He was looking for it to you know, make a change, and he told Kirby to come to the session and listen to me. And I guess he did. And then I auditioned with him. I was the very first bass player. <laughs> all the 50 bass players. Wow. And, 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 and yeah, I got the gig. And so, uh, how quickly did you guys bond after that? I mean, was it immediately you guys connected on a lot of different levels? Yeah, I think it, I, I think it, it's, it's the, it was kind of an airy thing. <laughs> we're, we're coming, I'm, I'm on March 28th, he's on April 12th, man. I mean, we, the problem actually the problem has always been that we've been actually so close and in tune that like you know I, it couldn't last forever because like you know that that I mean that kind of mind reading man I mean creates a tension that like wow I mean you know I mean it's just like you know I could, I could, I I could feel where he was going you know at a certain point you want to experience that with other people you know. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But the thing is, is, is that like we, I really, we had a relationship, a really, really deep relationship. So far as like, you know, listening and 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 interaction, you know, you know, because I I would never give up on 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 on, on, on where I was. Okay, because I've had I've had basically the fans ask me, what was I? Okay. You know, at Todd Barkin's Club in San Francisco is the first time that I used Geraldine with all five channels. I'm getting it out of the way. I was playing with Robert <laughs> Ford. And, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, of course, it's Dougal hated. But anyway, yeah. uh, you know, what I used was I had a B-15, you know, flip top with a JBL speaker in it. That was my main channel. For the G string and the D string, I had a 12-inch polytone. For the A string and the E string, I had a 15-inch polytone. And I was running them off. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the bass sounded beautiful. <laughs> oh. oh, man. I mean, well, yeah, the tapes, we've got to get tapes of that immediately. I know, Bart. Everything was everything was recorded. I mean, the what was the reaction of when you first started playing Geraldine? What were the reactions of your of of your of your part of your bandmates? As far as the how did how did the the sound and the feel of the music change? Well, I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was a difference. We, we had like we had like a far out. We had like a you know. Um, a return to, to forever funk band. <laughs> you know, I mean, what can I say? I mean, you know, I have some. I, I have some. I still have some pretty strange songs that I that, that I'm going to uh, actually. And now I'm going to release. I'm, I'm going to try to figure out a way to play them. You know, and so uh, I hope I hope I can do this. Uh, this is something that I've, I've been discussing with Mike Clark and. Uh, we definitely want to get back together and get this and, and get some of this stuff out. That's awesome. You know, and I will, I will. And I, I, I think that, I mean, it's time for me and Mike to come and actually show what we really do. You know, <laughs> so. Dude, there, uh, I mean, that, hit it now, man. Like, I mean, I, I just, it's, uh. Did you ever pl did that group, group therapy, did you ever play with two trap sets? Pardon? Did you ever play with two drummers, like two trap set drummers? Did you ever play in a band like that? Well, you know, well actually, the thing is, is, this idea does involve two traps, two two drummers. Okay. Okay. And the drummers are Lenny White <sighs> and Mike Clark. Oh, that, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's more than pretty good because see, the thing is, yeah. Lenny White and Mike Clark have a group in New York already. That's right. That they play together in. That's right. You know, so 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 I I I, 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 I want to use so I, because they already have it have have their thing their thing all together. I like I want to bring them. I'd love to bring them to back to Japan with me. You know, with with and 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 have and have uh, with the right people on it, man. You know, 
know, I, you know, like, I, I, like I want somebody like Donald Harrison on, 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 on horn and, and, uh, you know, old, old friends, man, that are, a, 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 a really, an old, all friend, all star group. You know. Well, you may, you may, yeah. You make sure to get Jack Walrath on that session. Oh yeah, listen, man, it's it's, it's going to happen. Um, I, I I believe I, I believe it's going to happen it's going to, because I think it's going to be uh, too hard to turn down. Well, I mean, it, here here's here. Did you? People, people yeah. want to hear it. No. People will want to hear it. People want to hear it. I think. Yeah, because it's it's you it's know? love, man. I mean, I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it's, sure. it's, it's people that are truly, you know, the other thing is this, uh, you're, I, I'm asking you this as, as an objective non-musician. Uh, I mean, if you, if you get your, your way and you get your, the, the cats out that you want to play with, especially with Mike and Lenny, I mean, is it, is it something where, you, you know, you probably haven't played with them in a few years or maybe a while and can you pick it up right away? Does it just, you just get back in that groove? How long do you think you could get in to where you would be happy <laughs> The groove is never gone. <laughs> no, man, you gotta listen. Once, you gotta spell that out for people no, that don't play music. Once we count it up, it's on. You don't understand. I mean, I can I can play with Harvey Mason and I'll be just like it was in nineteen seventy three. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm honest. I'm, 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 I swear to you, it, 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 it will uh, be that's that so way. cool, oh, man. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I mean, it, it's it's even it's more than muscle memory. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, it's really, you know, I mean, it, it's just something. Once you're in tune, once you're in tune with certain drummers, man, like like I was. I mean, this includes like Al Cosmo, Zahn. I don't. I mean, really, all these guys, man, that that, that that were there, man, you know, were were really were picked out. You know, were were and and because I knew for sure. That I could play with them, and I understood. I understood. I understood, I understood where they were. Okay, and I, I can, I, you know, so I can, I can play into their ego. I can play. I, I can play away from, but I can. Also, but the main thing is, I can completely support the sound in such a way that you know it, it, it actually, it, it can really magnify the, you know, the thing that we had together. You know, you know, because like, because I knew they had solid time and. Just magnificent groups. So um, I'm very, I'm very fascinated. With, I'm very fascinated with the two. With so Lenny and Mike, can you explain their roles? Those two very strong lead drummers. But how would they play? No, I don't. I don't believe Darren's dad's going to be in that role. <laughs> right. Tell me what you tell me. You know, explain what you envision. I want. I'm interested. I never heard their new group, but I know it's got to be fun. Yeah. 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 I, I, I have. I have a. Uh, he sent me an email. Of it's the, like a the, new the, brew, the, new brew, or something. The, the, the new group that they have, and, and they've been they've been promoting it. So like uh, in New York, and so like uh, you know, I, I like to I like to see uh, what I have to do, and, and, and in fact, it, uh, even if I have to go back there. Uh, and check it out and see what's happening. You know, but I want to make it happen. I, I mean, this big. I'm you know now I'm at the age I want to do all of the things that I that I really dream with. You know, like you know, I, I need to go back and revisit friends. You know, I want to play with Patrice Russian again. I right. played on their first album. You know, I mean, you know, a lot. I mean, it's just you know, these these he, he, all. I mean, it's a lot of things that you know. Little things like that that are uh, like, uh, you know. You yeah, and I think you, you need know. to. Be, I think you need to be willing to. Uh, I think you need to be willing to uh, to accept that you will come probably by yourself. You don't. You know, it's 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 more. It's not cost effective to to bring your 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 session mates. You got too many people to play music with in the states, so you just need to come by yourself, carve out a period of time, hit up those guys, and file through on it. And you know, and that's what I've been doing the last four years. Is just you know setting goals. You know, having. A, <laughs> The thing is, because of the, uh, unfor the unfortunate scene here, is because uh, is that like because I live here, I'm almost considered a domestic. So like, I have to bring all my international friends to Japan to play with. Right. 
saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that 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 I mean, they know I'm in the international market. But flying here in Japan, I have to bring everybody. You know, I have to bring, I have to bring, I have to bring all the, the really good musicians. You know, to to, to, to draw. You know, to, to draw a good crowd at, at the balloon open and everything else. This I will do. Uh, you know, where the, uh, I think it's exactly the opposite. Where you know, I, I know I can go home to Oakland and have all the right, all the cats <laughs> be there. You know, I mean, not to mention, you know, Jesus, my my high school class. You know, <laughs> you know. So I, I think people will show up for that, for, for, for that, because especially if I get my my clock on it, or or I have, and, and or if I have something really new to show them, you know, you know, like this this young drummer, you know, which I'm thinking of, of, of mixing in with. My, I mean, every day there's music happening here, you know, and it's different. I mean, and so many musicians, they come into a club and they play for free. But they, but they got a place to play. You know, mm-hmm. and, you know, these are sometimes bars owned by my friends and I just, I just go there and, and you know, and, you know, and, and just, and just, and just hang out, you know, but, but, but uh, and just, and, and watch the young musicians, you know, every Sunday there's a, the Kobe Blues Society Club, which uh, every last Sunday of the month, you know, and uh, these are all amateur musicians that come up there and play, and you know, and and, and, and I, I've watched some improvement over the years. Some of them have, many have been my students before, you know, and so and so I, I've watched them, you know, develop and everything else, man. So, so and and. Uh, and it's, and, it's, and it's it's a wonderful thing to see to see see how how, how some how, how musicians you know they really want to play and they're doing all and the thing is they're doing their history lessons too, you know. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. Believe me. You know. Yeah. You 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 can't be a really good Japanese musician without knowing what what happened before you. There's, I mean, you know, there are some new single guys that they come out with get some stuff, but the thing is that, you know, they don't realize that, hey, I'm sorry, but that ain't new. <laughs> right, right, right. But they're, they, they're entrenched in their rudiments. They do know the history of their yeah. music. You yeah, have the same problem in America. So right. Like, <laughs> you know. That's yeah. right. People try to sneak things in there, but, it, you know, it's always been there. Yeah, well, that's, of course, man. If you don't listen to history, man, you're, you're, yeah. you're bound to repeat it, or you know. Well, no, there's a cycle. It's a cycle. It's the same cycle that that you know. Uh, spiritually, I just that was my question about the headhunters when you guys were up and running. You know, you see some of this. A lot of cats I talked to, they they saw you at you know these little small theaters in New York or other places like that. But um, can you talk about like? It's hard to be in a band now, like you said. It's hard for people to be in the same place at one time for an extended period of time. But uh, can you talk about the uh, the spiritual connection of of the band uh, when you guys are really, you know, peaking? Well, the thing is, right now it's, it's like uh, I think I think right now uh, if you're talking about the hand you know. Hopefully, we're in the age of a healing process. So I'm, I'm, we're waiting to see what's going to happen. Okay, you know, and uh, I'm waiting to see how hard it goes. Yeah. But right now, um, for me, you know, my focus is on me and Mike getting back to where we originally <laughs> were. Right on, man. Do it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, yeah. That's, that, that's the main. That's the main point. That's the main point. If I, if I get, if we get that back, you know, we'll have the actual proof thing down and then we'll, you know, get some really other monster players to play that along with us on, on that, you know. You never know. You know, Herbie might see us again. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, it, but when you talk about this, 
what are we waiting for? What what are we waiting to see in so far as this uh, healing period? I'm, I I absolutely concur with you, but but how long are we gonna be waiting for? Hey, I'm gonna be like Sylvester Stallone. I ain't getting up. <laughs> Go ahead, you know, groove or die. Yeah, I, you know, hey, this is what's happening. I have ninety songs I haven't played, and you have never heard in the United States. They, most of them have only been played in Japan. So I might as well show the rest of the world what, what, what some of this stuff, this weird stuff is. We need weird stuff. Oh, it's, some of it's pretty out there. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm sure. And it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, it's, uh, anyway, go ahead. Gro- groove or die. You know, let's, let's throw it out there. It's, no, it's groove or die, man. Period. Yeah, yeah, and, that's, and I'm going and I'm going to I'm going to do it. We'll be going a Groover, the, uh, by the way, the Groover Guy Band with with with, with Antoine Blanc and and Tony Match. We will be in Spain, uh, Spain, Paris, London, uh, you know, Italy in April, all through the month of April. We'll be going. We'll be going back to Europe. Okay. Wow. So. Very cool. Our, our European friends, uh, we're coming back to the Hideaway Club, <laughs> and we want to take it down again. We, you know, we loaded that place up, and we and we had a great time. And I'm I'm going to have them literally stomping their feet next time. Okay. <laughs> so hey, I, I mean, I'm having a good time, and you know, and I'm, I'm I'm ready to have, have a better time. How important is it, what are the things that you, what are your goals, aside from getting back and, and playing music, you know, uh, why is it so important to keep building communities, musical communities, going back to this bar, taking it down bigger? Why is that important for humanity? Oh, I mean, that's not important. I mean, I, I'm, you know, what's important is how much fun it's going to be. <laughs> you know, and, and, what, and how and the, the music was good. The place felt great. You know, I mean, I could hear everything. You know, we could communicate. We had such a wonderful time. You know, the women are beautiful. What kind of, I mean, what do you want? I'm, I'm only a man. You're <laughs> only a man. You're well, only. That's right. You're only a man. That's all. <laughs> As we, uh, uh, do you want? As we wrap up here, I just had a one, one, uh, a couple more questions for you here for part two. Did you, did you, ever play on Jacks on Sutter? Jazz funk what? Jacks on Sutter. It's it was in San Francisco. It's called Jacks on Sutter Street. <laughs> What's that? Say that again? Wait, say that again? I I'm 15, 15, 15 years old. Wow. I was playing a Jackson Park. Okay? Yeah. I also played, you might remember a place in, in, in uh, I mean, in, in uh, not, no, but you remember Seabus Palace? I used to play there, too. I mean, you know, then there's another place in Sausalito where out in where out the boondocks where, where, where Caesar himself started. <laughs> you know, with, with Latoya and, and, and Armando Perrazza, and Armando Perraza, who actually really taught me how to play. And that, my friend, <laughs> is a lesson. I, lo- I love it. No, so, but Caesar, man. Caesar was in. You're telling me there was a boat out there. You, you I, this is very essential. Like, where was this? Oh, it's a, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's a few secrets, man. The, the, the playing good time. I love you, man. And, I mean, and, 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 and actually, and playing. You know, I mean, 
you, know, you, you can, you can, you know, some people don't, don't choose notes, you know, or some people choose notes, but they don't choose where they play them. You know, I, you know, I simply, you know, if something does something on an emotional factor, that's why I play it, because the bass instrument itself has that quality of giving emotion to music. It's the bottom figure. It's important. You can have the rhythm, and then you have you, you can have the guideline, and that is what that's what the bass is about. It's the guideline. 